1981, the first case of AIDS was made public. At that time, it was believed to be a syndrome that plagued the gay community. During that same period, so much of mystery surrounded this syndrome as cancers and infections, rarely seen before by health professionals, suddenly became very visible as patients with AIDS suddenly became afflicted with such and death would seem unescapable. The fear within the gay community was very palpable and the stigma to the community would become extreme. It didn't take long before other groups of individuals would be identified as victims to the then syndrome. Those who suffered from bleeding disorders that require regular transfusions, persons who took intravenous drugs, and yes, even the heterosexuals. At that point, the urgency to take an action against AIDS became an utmost priority, and by 1984, the virus, human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, became identified as the causal agent of AIDS. Four decades later, with so much knowledge about HIV AIDS and even various regimen to halt the spread of the virus, the threat of the virus is still real and AIDS still a leading cause of death worldwide. And that is why the month of December which brings an awareness to AIDS is very crucial. And so, in this video, I will briefly explain the nature of HIV AIDS and suggested ways to slow its transmission. Hi, I'm Dr. Francisca Osage, and thank you for joining me on Francisca on Health Matters. Now, what is the HIV virus? Now, in explaining the HIV virus, I will refer to the human cell as the host cell. Now, the HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, is characterized by its genomic nature, that is, a retrovirus, meaning it has an RNA material. Now, as a side note, as humans, our genetic material is the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid. The virus has as its genetic material the, the ribonucleic acid that is RNA, that's the HIV virus, not all viruses, the HIV virus has the ribonucleic acid at its genetic material. Now as a retrovirus, when it gets in contact with its host cell, it attaches and integrates into its host cell and is able to convert its RNA material to a complementary DNA equivalent. Now it's able to integrate into the DNA and with the aid of the DNA machinery, makes several copies of its viral material. And that is what the HIV virus does. Now, it particularly identifies in humans cells with the CD4 markers. Now, this is primarily the T helper cells. And having made several copies within the T helper cells, destroys the T helper cells and sets out to attack the human immune defense cells. The virus thus initiates a breakdown of the host immune system. Now the unaffected immune cells of the host having identified an invader also spring into action to curb the effect of the virus. However, without external intervention, over time the immune cells of the host succumb. The virus then overpowers the immune system, causing a depletion of the host immune cells, especially those with the CD4 markers. And after a certain threshold with a low count of the CD4 cells, the host then becomes vulnerable to disease conditions that ordinarily will not evolve. At this stage, the host is described as having AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. So let's recognize some statistics. According to the latest reports from HIV.gov, as at October 2023, approximately 1.2 million people in the U.S. have HIV. HIV continues to have a disproportionate impact on racial and ethnic minorities and gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. A notable decline of 12% in new cases of HIV in the U.S. was observed from 2017 to 2021. 
In 2021, new cases estimated 32,000, with a 70% of the 32,100, that is 22,400, being accounted for by men who had sex with men. And this sub-demographic made up 86% of the estimated numbers among all males. People who acquired HIV through heterosexual contact made up 22%, that is 7,100, of the new infections in 2021. People who injected drugs accounted for 8%, that is 2,500, of the 32,100 new cases. By age group, people aged 13 to 34 accounted 58%, that is 18,700. By race slash ethnicity in 2021, Black African American accounted for 40%, that is 13,000, of the estimated 32,100. Hispanic slash Latino, 29%, that is 9,300. And White, 26%, that is 8,200 of new infections. Worldwide, according to the WHO, an estimated 33 million people were living with HIV at the end of 2022. HIV continues to be a global health issue, claiming 40.4 million lives so far as of 2023. Now, how is it transmitted? First of all, let's debunk the myths. HIV is not contracted through touching, embracing, or hugging. Coughing or sputum does not spread the infection. Sharing eating or drinking utensils, the use of public restrooms, bathrooms, and swimming pools does not spread the infection. However, there's a high risk of transmission when coming in direct contact with an infected person's blood, semen, or vaginal fluid during unprotected sexual intercourse, sharing contaminated needles, syringes, or any type of injecting apparatus used for administering drugs, also accidental needle pricks with contaminated blood, on sterile procedures that might expose blood, engaging with persons with other STDs, use of unsafe or unscreened blood for blood transfusion. There can also be vertical transmission from a positive mom to her unborn child. When the virus affects a person, it recognizes a surface protein on immune cells designated as CD4, otherwise called T helper cells. These T helper cells play a central role in the body's adaptive immune response to invading organisms, activating other immune cells to respond to these invading organisms. Now we recall when the virus infects a host cell, it identifies the cells of the immune system that bear the CD4 markers and these are primarily the T helper cells. Now within the host T helper cells, it's able to convert its original RNA material to a complementary DNA material. And having done that with the aid of the host's DNA machinery, it replicates into several viral particles, thus establishing an army of HIV viruses mounting an attack on the host immune cells, including the T helper cells or the CD4 cells. During this stage, the persons affected experience flu-like symptoms such as headaches, fever, joint pains, diarrhea, lymph node swellings, this stage is referred to as the acute stage of HIV. Now, in response to this attack, the unaffected immune cells also spring into action, mounting an attack against this viral activity. And over time, we are able to suppress viral activity, however, not completely, as some of the viruses remain lurking in organs such as the brain, the bones, and hence there is a period of quiet, or should I say a symptomatic um, phase. Now this stage is referred to as the latent or chronic phase of HIV and it can go on for another 10 years. Now with continual viral activity and without the intervention by use of antiretroviral therapy, 
Soon, the viruses overwhelm the adaptive immune response of the host cell, and this is accompanied by depletion of the CD4 cells. Now, with the continual depletion of the CD4 cells level, it gets to a point whereby these CD4 cells become very low and the host becomes very vulnerable to various infections. And at CD4 cells levels of 200 per cubic millimeter and below, AIDS is defined. The person becomes um, vulnerable to opportunistic infections. And these are infections that ordinarily would not evolve in a well-functioning immune system. Such opportunistic infections include conditions such as pneumocystis pneumonia, um, toxoplasmosis, candidiasis, there are other conditions such as Kaposi sarcoma. There are a plethora of opportunistic infections. So the final stage um, characterized by the presence of these opportunistic infections is referred to as the stage of full-blown AIDS. Now with the introduction of the antiretroviral therapy, there's been seen a marked reduction in the incidences of AIDS. Although the prevalence of HIV infection still remains relatively high, with the introduction of pre-exposure prophylaxis and post-exposure prophylaxis, however, there is hope that the incidences of HIV will be reduced significantly. Awareness is key. Now, there is still a lot of stigma attached to this condition, discouraging persons from checking their status and some infected persons um, hiding their status from fear of discrimination, risking potential partners of being infected. Now, there are special antiretroviral therapies known as pre-exposure prophylaxis for persons who are negative but are at high risk of getting infected. And there is the post-exposure prophylaxis for persons who have possibly been exposed to the virus. And this is very effective, it's taken within 72 hours of exposure for a period of 28 days. And then there's the antiretroviral therapy for persons who are positive, and this is taken for life. Now, this will not cause a cure, but it will significantly suppress viral activity. Indeed, after four decades, and with the introduction of the antiretroviral therapy, the fight against HIV hasn't it been a challenge. However, with the use of the preventive and treatment therapies, and hopefully with widespread awareness, this fight will soon be a thing of the past. And so let's continue to spread its awareness. Again, I hope you found this informative and educative. And if you've had, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.